Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. Man, I finally fixed my microphone. My kid keeps playing with it. He threw it off the sofa and almost exploded. Ay caramba. Today we're going to look at the game Cross Code, which is a really really interesting 16-bit RPG that has quite an intricate action-based combat system and tons of little mechanics that I haven't seen used quite this well in a while. There will be undoubtedly comparisons made to titles like Zelda and in many ways the game does dungeons better than I've seen that franchise achieve in recent iterations. Does CrossCode successfully combine RPG and puzzles or is this another one to drown in a sea of pixels? Let's find out. Whichever way you slice it, CrossCode is a very interesting title in terms of its story and delivery. You play as Leah, who awakes as an avatar in the Crossworlds game. Now think something along the lines of Westworld in the future and you have a good idea of how this works. However, rather than humans entering it, you enter playing as an avatar and then there are humans in the world. These avatars are one of four classes but yours is pre-selected for you and you awake to find that Leah's lost her memory and that's the reason they've teleported you into this new body but as you progress through the storyline it actually gets far more complex with some dream sequences and then at about a quarter of the way through quite a large twist in the tale that I absolutely won't spoil but suffice to say it came as a pleasant surprise and one which afforded me much more motivation to push towards the end. Throughout the game you'll meet other players and for anyone who's ever played an MMO you will love the little nods to that design even down to when a player comes online you then invite them to join your party and they'll teleport to you and later when you join the guild the fourth wall breaking dialogue was quite cleverly done and it didn't break the immersion of the game because you were playing a game within a game and it wasn't you playing it was Leah. Other than the main story there are tons of side activities and yes these are very fetch quest heavy but there was a bit of variety here including killing different mobs or searching for lost items within a dungeon. Thankfully they're entirely optional and simply offer you cash, items and new gear. In terms of the gameplay then, this is where the fusion of action RPG and puzzle really confused me within the first hour. Now the title has one of the longest tutorial sections that I've experienced but it does it with good reason. There's far more depth to the title than initially meets the eye. Not only can you fire disc like weapons, these can be charged to bounce off walls to flick switches. They'll only travel through certain surfaces which again will help you to solve problems. There's platforming here in the form of an auto jump which allows you to travel a certain distance but the puzzling will use a combination of all of the above including pushing boxes, throwing explosives and then later as you unlock new abilities using those to solve a multitude of brain bending puzzles and they really are that. Each of the dungeons of which there are seven are incredibly long and intricate and they are tough and that's just the puzzles alone. Many of these will require timing and lightning quick reflexes from the player to get to the end. Combat initially feels quite standard, you have a dash move, you can get up close and personal with your melee or you can use ranged disc throwing which feels like a twin stick shooter using the right stick to aim. What you'll need to do is hold the right stick to focus the aim reticule before you'll get an accurate shot. There's a block button as well that affords you some protection from incoming projectiles and then there's the break mode whereby if you can get a rear shot on an enemy or some other attack which will break their guard you can then deal some massive damage while they're stunned. In what seems like quite a self-referential gameplay choice it's starts out brutally difficult. The smallest of cretins will be putting an end to you and I'm not going to lie I found myself just tweaking the difficulty sliders that allow you to customise the experience because it can become a touch too frustrating in the earlier game. Now as you progress your character most certainly powers up and just as with any good MMO which is the framework this RPG bases itself on you'll gradually transition from having all the firepower of a paper towel to being carved out of solid wood. The upgrade system works on circuits. The first circuit you have has four branches and you'll be spending points to improve different areas of your character. Now later after the first dungeon you'll unlock a new circuit board that has an elemental ability. During combat you can switch to this on the fly by pressing down on the d-pad and these attacks come with far greater firepower 
However, there's an overheat mechanic of sorts that you'll have to keep your eye on, as hitting it's going to revert you back to standard neutral damage and you'll have to wait for it to cool down. Of the 90 different combat arts that you can unlock, they include several unique skills and abilities which can be used on the fly using a variety of different button combinations. In my opinion, while feeling initially far too difficult, combat in Crosscode's far more strategic as you work out exactly how to break different enemy types guard. And once you do that, it's a much easier and more pleasant experience. And then there's the boss fights. There are over 30 different boss fights in the game. And that doesn't include the small, more tough enemies you may face within a dungeon. Many of these will be multi-stage, multi-problem affairs and require you as a player to actually think. Who would have thought? Another really interesting gameplay mechanic that I want to briefly brush on are the items that you pick up in the world. Now, you get certain things which can be passively used, but there are also those which are active, like a small scanner that you can actually activate, and when you're in certain areas, it will detect hidden items. You pick these up along the way, and they're few and far between, but they just mix up the gameplay in an unexpected way, and having them manually toggled meant that, as a player, it actually felt like you were being given control. Now, while the world map isn't entirely open, you are given quite large areas to explore and navigate through and after raiding those dungeons you'll want to sell some of that loot. In perhaps one of the weaker aspects of the game I didn't really think they explained or particularly delivered some of the crafting elements particularly well. You'll find a number of stalls and shops which offer items that may be crafted if you have the prerequisite materials. However, it just felt a little bitty and underutilized and in all honesty, I ended up just ignoring these. Thankfully, there are traditional shops where you can go and purchase items and gear, but the best weapons and loot comes from those MMO inspired trading shops. I just didn't enjoy them very much. Perhaps some form of tracking ability on a particular item or piece of gear that you wanted to craft would have helped to mitigate some of the frustration there. Overall, I'm really impressed with Crosscode. I love the combat, it's excellent. And the difficulty sliders don't feel like you're cheating and finding a good balance changes from hour to hour in the gameplay. And that juxtaposition between the quiet stillness of the puzzle solving and then the manic combat really has left an impression on me. And I appreciate that the developer include quality of life features such as a fast travel system right from the get-go and the blessed option to skip the more basic tutorial elements. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20, while the controls score 17 out of 20. If we look at the visuals and performance, the title reminds me of a mixture of Wargroove and Stargy Valley, which is to say it's bright and colourful and for the most part makes the most of its 16-bit pixel count. While there is a touch of visual repetition, particularly in the millions of characters that are running all over the shop, I appreciated the quantity of enemy types, over 120, and the starkly contrasting areas. The main issue I have in terms of the visuals comes in the form of the performance. Now at times, performance is 60 FPS, but you know exactly what I'm going to say. This isn't consistent. In the main town areas where there's lots of other players around, this fluctuates wildly, and while in this type of experience it's not a huge deal breaker, it's certainly an issue and was making me feel a little nauseated after the 10th hour. But then I sat playing for 10 hours, so I'm not sure whose fault that is. <laughs> Thankfully in dungeons, performance is much more consistent, as is it for the vast majority of the playtime. I just don't think it's unfair to say it needs a bit of a patch, as a 60 FPS to 25 seesaw is somewhat of an eyesore. Crosscode has some of the best audio I've heard in this style of game in a while, with over 60 different musical tracks that seem to change from area to area and moment to moment. And strangely, the game developers say it was made by a rice ball, which is the affection nickname of Dennis Agbulut. I'm sorry if I just destroyed your name, Dennis. I'm going to call you Rice Ball instead. Now, I thought it was lovely that Dennis actually started writing the soundtrack when he graduated from high school, and he's been working on it in dribs and drabs on the side while he went through university. So he describes this soundtrack as having been a part of his life, which helped him to push himself so far outside of his comfort zone. And, and you know what? Reading that, that is incredible. And I'm so pleased to say that I hadn't actually read that when I said what I've just said about the sound. The music is incredible, Dennis. You have absolutely smashed it. Overall, the visuals get 16 out of 20, which is hindered by the inconsistent frame rate in the town area. Music is absolutely excellent. Some of the audio sound effects aren't as good, and as long as it's not my Joy-Cons, the game was lacking some HD rumble. Overall, I would give the audio 18 out of 20.
Crosscode's going to set you back £17.99 or your regional equivalent and as mentioned has around about 70 to 80 hours of gameplay although the pace I play at and I do like to be a bit of a completionist I think I'm more on the lines to push this to around about 100. Throw in the number of dungeons and skills and enemies to fight this really is value for money done right. I'm really pleased to say that there is a strictly limited physical run of the game available for pre-order and it's a title for collectors that you should own physically. I've a strong feeling that this could potentially become a bit of a cult classic. And having that version with the original steelbook, hardcover, soundtrack, stickers, all that fun stuff, surely seems like a good investment. Overall for me, I think the game is excellent value and I give it 18 out of 20. Publisher Deck 13 and developer Radical Fish Games have nailed CrossCode. The interesting amalgamation of a puzzle RPG title has simultaneously elevated the puzzling as well as the combat, and CrossCode gets a switch up score of 87%. I'm afraid your backlog may be about to get a little bigger. If they can sort that performance out, they could push this easily up into the 90s. A big thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this one. Thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month, and as always, for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see ya <laughs>